YouTube. Happy Sunday. This is Dr. Wanda. I want to first thank all of the listeners that um, gave me a positive response to the um, last video where I talked about whether or not black women and African women can have genuine relationships. Um, your response gave me a cue that there's lots of work that needs to be done, but that actually it's important work and it's work worth doing. So I look forward to um, growing in that area and sharing in that area um, as I continue my journey. Now, as much as I like when people support me and agree with me and encourage me, I actually grow a lot from people who disagree with me. They stretch me, they challenge me, and give me really good food for thought. So there was one um, listener whose uh, YouTube name is um, Ansif, and I, it's spelled A-N-T-S-E-I-F, who left me what I'll describe as a pretty hostile um, message. You probably couldn't see it because it got removed. I'm not sure if YouTube removed it or he went in and re or this person went in and removed it. I'm not sure, but it's not there. So it came into my Gmail inbox, so I was able to read it in its entirety. I felt it had, um, it was worthy of some decent response, and so I want to read it here, and then I'd like to take some time to address some of the things that was raised. Okay, so this person says, then why are you there? You are surrounded by bad, evil people who don't want you there. So you are such a hot cake, and yet you ended up with that husband of yours. Honestly, the man you married is a typical least desirable type of man in Ghana. You sound bitter. The women don't envy you at all. I'm sure they find you strange and probably don't understand you. Western culture, especially black a black American culture is strange and undesirable to the everyday typical African. So when you put on loud makeup, talk loud, have tattoos, reveal sensitive body parts in your dressing, talk down to people, etc., you will get negative reaction. Have you ever thought about your relationship with Africans in the United States? Madam, stop talking negatively about the people slash country that have nicely hosted you. If you had something better in the south side and west side of Chicago, please return to your comfort zone. And that is Ansif's um, response to me in its entirety. So I think it's worthy of addressing. I want to start with the first one. Why am I here? I'm here because I have devoted for the last five years, um, I bring academic supplies, books, technology, learning aids, resources to the continent of Africa. I've served three other nations besides Ghana, South Africa, Tanzania, and Uganda. And it just so happens that God expanded my territory to Ghana. And as part of that effort, I have library planted. Um, to date, four libraries have been planted in various communities in Ghana. Um, I have something called Wandi Pads, where I use a local seamstress who sews um, reusable pads where girls do not have to miss school. They can simply um, wash them, set them in the sun, and, and put them on because this is an issue for this country where lots of girls lose time on education because of their menses. I have um, given, uh, donated uh, money to repair school. Um, in Lalonia, I've donated money in order for biodigestive toilets to be installed. I've raised money so that uh, an elder could have a water tank and reestablish herself in the community and feed herself. I have gone out to Kamasi and supported uh, a learning group, a, a group that meets after school that needed academic supplies, resources in order to keep the, ch the youth learning. I've gone out to the Yakusi area and functioned as their researcher to give them not only uh, mosquito repellent soap, but also give them a litany of things that they can do to not only repel mosquitoes, but to kill the adult, the female, destroy the larva, because that area is waterlogged. 
It's it, because it's full of rice growers. So the, the mosquito issue is huge for them. I've gone um, into Mampung and assisted youth who were blind and being struck on the road that I've, I've donated and raised money in order to give them signage that they place so that the people driving on that road can see that they're on that road and know that they cannot hear them. And so when they're passing them, they know to pause, slow down, that there are deaf students in the area. Um, I've gone out to um, to uh, the, the Cape Coast and spent time with uh, the School of the Blind and had resources and finance donated to the youth there. Uh, I have done a litany of things in Ghana um, from installing a, a park in the community that I'm living here in Pong, as well as establishing a cafe, a community cafe, where the kids come every weekend and they work with manipulatives, blocks, puzzles, dowels, books, every type of learning experience they're able to have for about three hours with the assistance of my daughter and my husband. And that has been going on, sir, since um, September. So I'm here because the Lord put Ghana as part of my Abrahamic experience. So I'm not here as part of the year of the return or the year of the return extended. I'm here as part of my Abrahamic experience, which means that Africa, sir, is my ancestral birthright. I am, I, God made no mistakes. He had me born and raised as a black American, but there's no question that I am of African descent. And he decided that I would take all of that scholarly research all of that 30 something years of education and all of my strategies and methodologies and I would use them in the motherland to help raise the self-esteem and the academic capacity of youth and educators here. So that explains why I'm here. So in terms of my husband, okay, my husband is the is the catalyst for Ghana to have acquired me. So there had to be a reason for me to come west because up to this point, up until I met Isaac, I had only been east and south. So he is the reason I came here. Um, you gave a, per, a, a description of him that was negative. You know, you said that he is the, the, the least um, the type of man that one would least want to marry. So I don't have the eyes to look at him that way. What I saw was a, a charismatic, kind, God-fearing, intelligent man with some of the, the most beautiful dimples I ever laid eyes on. And so that's what I saw. What, the way you see him as a Ghanaian man is, is, is a personal issue that you need to take up with yourself. I, 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 what you see is what you see. I don't see that. Okay. What he has been to me is he has been uh, probably the best manager, like let's take away the marriage, but he's been the best manager I've had in all four of my experiences in, in all the nations. So this means that he is my G, my human GPS. He's my translator. He manages our money. He's the person that works with logistics. He gets me in situations. He gets me out and I get them, I get in and out of them safely. He has been the greatest protector. He has been my, the greatest guide. He is my road trip partner. He's the person that is the only reason I shine in this country is because God saw fit to partner me uh, with, with, with really someone that is capable of speaking various languages, maneuvering through the nation, understanding cultural cues, and keeping me safe in the process. So again, any opinion that you have about my husband, these are issues that you have to take up with yourself. I'm not a, a natural Ghanaian, so I don't know when you say those things, I don't know what you mean by least marriage, marriage material. I have no idea um, what you mean by that. You made some, some, some descriptions of, of black women, loud mouth, too much makeup, talking down to people. Um, uh, I, these are, these, this is the way I will answer that. Those type of women that you describe absolutely exist. I will never tell you they don't exist. I will tell you that you would be hard pressed to find anyone in any of the nations that would describe me that way. Um, I am by, by choice, a natural girl, been natural, um, I would say for at least the last 25 years. My locks are 37 inches long. I am a minimalist with makeup. 
Um, usually I put a little talc to take away shine. I wear a little black eyeliner because it pays homage to my mother who always had those Cleopatra eyes and I thought she was the prettiest lady ever. Um, and, I, and, and everybody know I'm, the lipstick is going to be popping. I love me some lipstick, uh, but I, I tend to even roll with the gloss. And the glow I have is because I, I use a facial spray as part of my Wonderland's Natural. And it, uh, it consists of hibiscus, rose water, and glycerin. So that gives me kind of like a little... Um, uh, you know, sort of a little glow, and that's about it. So, again, I'm not that sister that you're describing. I will say, in uh, to address you, every nation, every country has its lower class citizens. These are what they're, they're either considered in d disgrace or ingrates or um, low class, uh, lumpins. These are the people that the working class community, the elite, drag along, okay? And a lot of the behaviors that they have tend to be rude and obnoxious and ugly, and um, they, they get off into crime and prostitution and fighting and cussing and jute joint jiving. Okay, I don't have relationships, day-to-day um, -day relationships with women like that. I, I have relationships with academics, professionals, social workers, educators. I have a relationships with, with activists, with people who are our professional entertainers, who are not-for-profit organizers, they run them or they own them. These are the type of women that are drawn to me. These are the type of women I have relationships with. So when you describe those women, what that tells me is that these are women that you've engaged with. Anytime I've engaged with this level of woman, it's been in the community that I lived in as a child, or when I was a teacher in the inner cities. I've taught in some of the roughest areas in the inner city, and these type of women exist. I don't hang out with women with felonies. I don't hang out with women that get misdemeanors. I don't hang out with women that talk down to not, not only other women. They don't talk down to people. Now, do I talk to women who advocate for themselves? Absolutely. These are intelligent human beings that know how to reason, use logic, so they don't have to hoop and holler and curse and, 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 and threaten and, and, and um, slash tires. None of this goes on. So the only thing I can say to you is I suggest that you um, meditate on a different type of woman that you stop watching what the media feeds you about um, black women. We are the most educated group in America. We are multi-degreed, PhDs, CEOs, and um, we, uh, uh, this, this, is, this is the group we are. So the media doesn't promote that to you, just like they don't promote the most intelligent elements of Africa to us. They still have you in huts with your belly swole, with flies around your mouth, begging for food. This is what they show us. The, the men are black and hot and they always got a machine gun and the women are always begging and easy um, prey for prostitution. That's all I can tell you. I don't base my relationships in Africa with Africans off of the media. It appears that you have fed, sir, on too much media. Um, I will go on to say, uh, what else did you say? You talked to me about the south side and, and, and west sides of Chicago, that if I feel like I can get better, I should go there because Africa has hosted me well, Ghana in particular, that I should stop talking negative. And one of the things that was most interesting about that at the time that your message came in to me, this country had just completed a demonstration called Fix the Country. That just stopped where they were complaining about a 20% tax on sanitary napkins, on the, 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 the ill repair of the roads, of bribery, of, 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 of um, inflated incomes, of nepotism. All of these things I don't even talk about. I've never talked about, if I talk about it, it's in passing. I've never talked about the open defecation, the fact that people openly use the bathroom, that educators, the educators I've met, actually go to the bush. I stayed out in Lelonia seven days, and there were no toilets. And those professional people who dressed in suits and beautiful clothes were actually using the bathroom in the bush. When I did discuss it, I discussed it within the framework of raising money in order to, to install biodigester toilets for the school to bring dignity and respect. So my mentor, my elder, my friend, my mother said to me, empty wagons make a lot of noise. Sir, 
Empty wagons make a lot of noise. You know some things, but a lot of what you're talking about, you don't know enough. You need to relax. It is okay to disagree, but you do not have to get personal and attack people in order to make a point, okay? Empty wagons make a lot of noise. My challenge to you, sir, is what have you done as a Ghanaian for your nation? What have you done for the Ghanaian woman to help her rise? Because this is a 70, 80 percent entrepreneur group. What have you done? Tell me how often President Akufadu asks you for your insight. Give me the, the education of secretary that you've sat down with. Show me the demonstration that you've gone to in order to help any part of the community. And hey, I will gladly interview you and have you on the show so that you can shine. But at this point, sir, it appears that empty wagons, empty wagons make a lot of noise. Thank you. I am Dr. Wanda J. Evans Brewer, a Pan-Africanist, education specialist. Uh, I love Africa. I'm here because the Father saw fit to send, to send me. I can go any place I want to on this continent, not because you say so, sir, but because God has the last word. I'm signing out.